on this episode of The Drunchy Show with Aaron and Jesse. I'm Jesse Inman, and this is the fourth episode of Celerats. And I'm Aron Inman, Jesse's co-host for the day. Today we're going to talk about tacos and wine. So basically this is just an episode to get tacos in our face. The concept's simple. We're going to taste tacos with our wine, and one wine that is double the price. Our price point's 17 to 22. These bad boys are coming in at 35 to 45. And then we see if you really need an expensive wine to enjoy your tacos. Yeah, we're all about price to quality ratio here. It's kind of one of our main staples as a brand. And so if they can't hold up, then why the hell would you drink? So these are the two wines that we're gonna try. This is the Lucky Rock 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. And this is a Lancaster 20, uh, 2015, 2015 Alexander Valley Sauvignon Blanc. So to jump into the 2015 Lancaster, Alexander Valley, Alexander Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Well, that's a tricky one, huh? So this wine was actually made similarly similarly to how we make our Sauvignon Blanc. It sees a little bit of oak, a tiny bit of new oak, a little bit of stainless steel. And the one thing that they do on their, their aging program that we don't do is they use a little bit of concrete egg. And just right off the bat, you can see that the color is a little bit more golden because yeah. of the age. Even though it's in the screw cap, which doesn't let a whole lot of oxygen in, you'll see the um, the color change over time. And it probably has a little bit more wood, what, 10% versus five. What we did is we brought this in, uh, pressed it, fermented it in stainless steel, stirring it every day, twice a day at some points if it started to get a little bit more frustrated during fermentation. Um, and then we put it, that, racked it off of the lees, the settlings, and then put it into 50% wood, 5% new wood, and 50% stainless. And so it's, it's got a good balance between fruit, softness, roundness, acid. There is a similarity to them, uh, but you're actually getting the age for sure on the Alexander, on the uh, Lancaster. In a good way? In a, in, not in a bad way. It's a little reductive, a tiny bit reductive, possibly screw cap. Re reduction can be bad. You can get some onions and garlic and horse and <laughs> but, <laughs> but Oh man, I remember my first one. Um, but you know, you get some more flint, graphite, stone, things like that. Um, but it's not always a bad thing. It can be really nice, but it's hard to control. And the really interesting thing about like reduction in Sauvignon Blanc is it actually adds to the fruity character if you walk the line. So now we're gonna try some tacos from Taqueria Delicious. Delicious in Spanish, I think. It's located in Santa Rosa. We picked up some carne asada and some carnitas, and we're gonna see how those pair with these Sauvignon Blancs. Now we taco taste time. I like it to have a bite of food, taste the wine, take a bite of food. That's how I was always taught in restaurants and things. This is the carne asada. Not bad. The Sauvignon Blanc accentuates accentuates the spiciness a little bit. Yeah, but it also brings out, because the, the spiciness brings out the booze. Yes. It makes, it taste, it makes the wine taste spicier. If I had to give that a rating, I would say not awesome. Yeah, the spice and the alcohol don't go well together. I'm gonna try it with the... Uh, I this. It smells more tropical. Well, I screwed up. I went into the pork taco. Let me go back to the steak taco. That's good. It's, it is less spicy, but actually they both taste spicy because it's spicy. But it tastes, this is, makes this more tropical and it makes this a little bit more, a little bit more basey, a little bit more heavy. I would give this a neutral pairing. It didn't elevate it, but it didn't take away from it. Yeah, this is a really good taco. The taco's pretty tasty. Tacos win all the way around. That's actually it makes it taste sweet almost. Yeah, the the, the pork like makes the, the sweetness of the wine come out a little bit more. It doesn't accentuate the spiciness. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not as spicy Maybe. the taco. And also uh, higher fat in pork and there's high acid in Sauvignon Blanc. And so acid will eat through the fat. And so they kind of meld well together. And I give, the, the, I give the Lucky Rock with the carnitas a neutral as well. It didn't really elevate it, but it didn't take away from the flavors. I think of the of the combinations that we've tried, uh, the, the carnitas taco without fail is my favorite, but it normally is. And I like I like them both. I think they both went well. It just comes down to your price point. So we have 2018 Lucky Rock County Cuvee. So it's a blend of 
three counties, Sonoma County, San Benito County, and Monterey County. This is 2017 Gary Farrell Russian River, and we were looking at the tasting notes, and it's a blend of a few different vineyards as well. It's about five different vineyards within Sonoma County. Yeah. So the Gary Farrell, 2017 <laughs> Russian River. So this was in barrel for about 10 months, 35% new French oak, which is standardish. Uh, and again, it was a blend of five vineyards. Let's give the Gary. The Gary Farrell, the old sniffy sniff. I've always loved Gary Farrell's wine. From when Gary Farrell made them to they have a newer winemaker, the wines are always a really strong pH, which is acid is basically a little stronger in them. Um, but it, I would imagine it's a little rich. Russian River Valley, a lot of times within like the wine world is seen as like a ripe, a riper area, which I would agree with overall. Dude, this one has a, lo a lot Gary of ripeness. Good. It has a lot of ripeness, but it's also like got this acid punch to it. That's it's not like it's a nice balance. Yeah. It's it's almost like if it was all that fruit, like pomegranate, raspberry jam, those kind of things, and then it didn't have any acid, it would be kind of flabby and a little bit gross. But it's not. It's pretty well balanced. It's got a little, again a little reduction. It's from the barrel. You get some toastiness, some flintiness. And this was thirty five percent new oak for the Gary Farrell. This is about ten percent new oak for the. Uh, Lucky I always feel like people act like 35% new is not a lot. It's a lot. But it extracts quickly. It extracts quickly and it's it's substantial. Yeah. But it has it's vanilla. So you get velin in from the wood. Furfural, which is a, uh, when you burn the inside of the wood, you get furfural, which is kind of like a toastiness. I thought you had to pay for that while in Mexico. Uh, I had furfural, I took penicillin, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, and the Lucky Rock's brighter. It's got more like Bing Cherry, uh, a little bit of like granite, kind of like uh, some some earth notes underneath mm -hmm. that red fruit. Um, a little bit lighter, I think, in body. Not quite as much vanilla because again, it's ten percent new wood versus thirty five percent. The then, body on the Lucky Rock is lighter. Yes, but not not lean. It's it's still got good texture to it. It's still like a um, a full wine. It's just lighter than the Gary mm -hmm. Farrell probably comes more, off as richer. I, I think a lot of times we've heard the term feminine. They're a little bit more feminine, softer, delicate. Um, Which has always been used to describe us. Yes, I the beard I grew it because I was going for soft and thin. So we're gonna try the carne asada with the Gary Farrell to start. Gary Farrell, this is my Gary Farrell. It's not bringing out flavors that weren't there before, but it is certainly not like elevating anything negative. Let's move on to the- Oh, I already am. <laughs> to the Lucky Rock and the carne asada. Just oh, <laughs> wow. Mama like that's good. That's yeah, I like really the nice. Gary Farrell a little bit more. This one's got um, this one's got a higher acid, the Gary Farrell, but this one it's got a little bit more burn on the back. Yeah, what I've noticed from the first tasting to the second tasting too is the carne asada is a little spicier. Yeah, that's a good point. And so our wine, the the Lucky Rock is is accentuating that spiciness, especially on the finish a little bit. If I had to give a, a winner, it would go to the Gary Farrell, but I'm, I'm really impressed with how we held up. I think we get a silver medal. We'll be back in the Olympics and we're gonna do it again next year. All right, carnitas and Gary. Carnitas and Gary. Get the sweetness of the pork. It's almost like the pork brings out a little bit of the smokiness in the mm -hmm. wine too. Let's move on to the uh, Lucky Rock and the, uh, the carnitas. It brings out a lot of bean cherry. I don't know if, if you're getting that. It's like cherry skin, like boom. I don't know if I could necessarily say that I loved one over the other. I would maybe give a slight edge to the Gary. Also the richness, the sweetness in that richness kind of curbs the heat, which marries a little bit nicer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're paying 22 bucks for the Lucky Rock, you're not gonna be pissed off about that at all. We Gary, are almost literally drinking our own Kool-Aid right now. So tacos and wine, good pairing, bad pairing. I think the Pinot Noir was a smash job hit. Sauvignon Blanc, eh. Well, thanks for joining us today to smash some tacos and Pinot Noir. We'll see you on the next episode.